And then what I'm going to do is I go into my uh, my PowerShell, or you can go into your DOS prompt or your terminal window on your Mac or whatever. I'm going to use PowerShell just because I'm used to it. And what I want to do is I want to put that um, that that repository, which will it, will it will actually create a folder for me and put everything in it. So I want to create that repository folder right here. So I want mine to be in this location. You can put it wherever you want, but make sure wherever you put it, you remember where it is. So many students do that and then they go, they come to me, well, I, I don't know where my GitHub repository is. Well, how am I supposed to know where it is? If you don't know, I don't know. So put it wherever you want. This for me, I put it under C users and 17347 is assigned to uh, this computer that I'm, I'm sitting in front of. That's the account that actually is my account. Okay, I'm going to show you the same thing, just so you know, the same things right here in File Explorer. And there's users, 17347. And basically, here's all the files and folders that are there. And I'm going to put that test kit probably up here down here somewhere. Okay, well, that's the same thing as what we have here. If I do ls, there it is. There's all the, the folders and files. So it's the same thing. So don't, don't get intimidated by this command line. All the command line is is it's just not a, a GUI. It's not some graphical user interface you can click on stuff. And this is the way computers actually originated how they were. The GUI didn't come out for many years later. And actually, most computer science people and, and systems admins, they're in the command line. They're not sitting there using with GUI interfaces because they don't have them. So don't be so intimidated by this. I see a lot of students become intimidated by this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write git clone, because remember, I already have git installed on here. Do a space, and if I hit my right mouse key, I actually going to paste that little uh, that little link in that they gave me. Okay, so I go git clone. I hit the enter key, and it basically clones it. That's it. Now, if I um, look at this uh, directory again, there it is. There's test git right there. And if I come over here, and um, I look, sure enough, there's test git right there. It was that easy. Okay. So let's go ahead and create something. So I'm going to double click on test git. I'm going to right click on here, and I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it assignments just like that and then I'm going to uh, double click into assignments I'm going to uh, create a new folder and I'm going to call this assignment one now this of course would be assignment one or project one or we want to call it this would be all the files and folders that you're going to uh, have for that one particular assignment so you can see that what I have here is I have test um, test get which of course is going to be for you would be like CPS 276 or 251. And inside of there, you're going to have assignments or projects, whatever you want to call it. And then inside of that, you're going to have assignment one, two, three, four, five, um, all the way through them. Okay, please set things up this way. Make it make sense. I see so many students have files all over the place, and then oh, I don't know where, where this is. I can't help with that. I'm, I'm not in your mind, okay? So I'm trying to show you how to do it the right way. All right, so if we go into assignment one, uh, one thing you have to do for Git is you can't just upload a bunch of empty folders. It won't do it. So we have to have at least content in assignment one. So I'm just going to go right, uh, right click, and I'm going to go new, and I'll just go te uh, text document, and I'm just going to write a test. Okay, just leave it at that. So assignment one has a uh, test in it, and assignment one's inside of assignments, which is inside of test Git. Okay, so if I come over to here, and I'll clear my screen by writing clear. And then what I can do is I, I want to go into that test get. So I go CD for change directory, uh, test get, there it is. And then if I look at it, there's my assignments and there's my readme doc. Okay, so I want to put this on GitHub. Very, very simple to do. I write git status. And once I do that, it's going to basically um, give me, you can see that it's saying, hey, this needs to be uploaded. Okay, no problem. Now I go git add in a period. That adds everything. I go git commit. I do hyphen m and I'm going to write just updates. It doesn't really matter what you write here. You have to write something. So you have to do this. Git commit updates. I get done. And then git push origin. Just like that. And I hit enter. And for me, it's going to go through. Now here's what's going to do to you the first time you do it. It's going to prompt a little, it's going to have a little box show up saying log in. It's going to ask you for your username. That will be your get username. No problem at all. It's going to ask you for your password, but that's going to actually be that token you created. It will not be the password. It will be the token. And then what it will do is it will take you, um, it'll probably take you to the get and you're going to have to go back into the screen. You just, you know, cause you have multiple windows open. So you go back into the screen and then what you'll do is you'll, 
Um, it'll ask you again for your username, again for the password, which is actually that authentication token. Put both of those back in there. The authentication token, remember, you can just copy it. And then if you just right click where the cursor is like, like that, it will paste it in there. You won't see it getting pasted in there, but it would get pasted in there, hit enter, and it will do the same thing. Once it does it, it's going to always do it. Okay. And I included another video link along with my video. So if you're really having problems with it, you can watch that one too, because that one, the guy actually has it do it. Mine, because I've already set all this up, it, it's not doing it for me anymore. Okay. But anyway, it just showed me that it did everything. So now I'm going to come over here to my uh, test Git page and I just refresh it. And once I refresh it, there it is in assignment one. And you can see assignments in assignment one and there's test.txt right there. Pretty simple. Now we're going to go a little bit further. I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to go into uh, assignments. I'm going to right click new folder. I'm going to call this assignment two just to show you what you can do. And then I'm going to come into here, right click new text document. And I'll just write this test one. doesn't really matter what I write it. Okay. So now I've got that. I'm going to go back into this window here. I'll write, I'll write clear just so we can see it. And I'm going to just do the same thing again. I'm going to go get status. I don't have to write this uh, get status every time, but I do it anyways. So you can see what it's going to do. So get add dot get commit m updates or whatever you want to write. Get push origin. Just like that. Wait for a few seconds. Just did it. Let's go see. Come over here. Here's my test kit. Click on it to refresh it. Sure enough, there's assignments. And there's assignment one, assignment two. Click on assignment two. There's that test uh, one.txt. See how easy this is? Now, if I need to see your work, I can go to your, because it's all public. So as long as you give me um, what the um, you know link is to where your account is, I can go to it myself. So for example, if I click on this, uh, github.com forward slash slash shaper, I need that from you. Okay, because that's that's going to give me your repository. And, or if you want to go even better, you can just actually give it like this and actually it'll take me right to the repository. So github.com shape or test get. In fact, you know what? I actually prefer this. That way I know which one it is. Uh, if you name things correctly, I'll figure it out. But I see a lot of students that name things crazy names. I don't know why. And then it's sometimes hard to find. Okay, so um, that's for uh, setting up your repository, uh, putting some folders in it. As you can see, very easy. What happens if we delete one? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back into here. I'm going to go into my assignments directory. I got assignment two. I'll right click and I'm just going to delete it. So now I've deleted assignment two. I just have assignment one. I come back here. I'll clear my screen by entering clear. Uh, again, this is in PowerShell. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get status. And sure enough, it's going to say, hey, you deleted this. Okay, good. Get add dot. Even though I'm deleting something, when I'm saying get add, what I'm basically saying is whatever changes I've made, go ahead and do them. That's that's what get add means. And that's what's so cool about this is I can just, you know, as I update my files or whatever, I just, you know, do get add and it will do all the updates to the repository. I go get commit m updates like that. Get push origin. And I go through a little bit. It will push it. And I come back here, uh, click on test get again. There goes assignments, assignment one. There is no more assignment two. So it worked. So it actually added things. It removed things. Um, any updates that I made, if I added more stuff or, or if I changed a file or something like that, it would actually do those updates too. It's going to do whatever. Now, one thing I want to make very clear to you, because a lot of students get confused with this, what they do is they run over this repository and they start adding stuff here. They do add file here, start writing a bunch of stuff here. Well, that puts it out of sync with your main computer. And then what happens is they go to the main computer, do something else, and then they try to sync it. And then the whole thing says, you know, all these error messages that have not in sync and all this type of stuff. And it's pretty much, a, it's, a, oh, it's very difficult to undo. Uh, it kind of is a, is a process. And so, you know, get, don't, don't do that. You have to understand that all you need to do is this computer, the computer you're working on, that is where you do all your work at. Okay. And then when you're ready to push something to get, then you open up your terminal window or your PowerShell or whatever, and you write the commands and you push that stuff to the repository and it will just, it will be there. 
But if you start going back and forth and screwing around, or if you go in the repository and you add stuff in there manually, and then start doing this, you'll have a problem with it. Another problem I see students do is they take their files and they go to the repository and they try to upload them one by one. Bad idea. That's You don't need to do that. And they sit there and say, well, I can't load the folders up. It doesn't work. Yes, it does work. They just did it wrong. And every single time, 100% of the time, it's always been a user error. And the reason that the students have a hard time with it is because they didn't bother to watch my videos. They didn't bother to really um, pay attention to what they're doing. So really, please, it's not that hard. Um, just watch the videos, try it a few times, and it will, it will work just fine for you, okay? So that's pretty much how you um, set up your, uh, your Git and your GitHub account. That's it.